Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at trigonometric parametric equations, quite a mouthful. So we can answer questions from exercise 8b. So these equations here are going to be parametric equations, but they're going to have a trig function in them. So for example here, just a reminder that parametric equations are pair of equa pairs of equations where there's a function to work out the x-coordinate of an equation and a function, a separate different function, that calculates the y-coordinate. And we can plot the graph of these two by working out different values of t and then working out what the x-coordinate is and working out what the y-coordinate is. In this case here, we have x equals sine t plus 2 and y equals cos t minus 3. Part A is asking for us to show that the Cartesian of the equation of the curve is given by x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 1. And hence sketch the curve. So, a good method with these is to rewrite out both equations in terms of sine and cos t respectively. You can then substitute both of them into the identity of sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So take the first one, x equals sine t plus 2 subtract 2 from both sides, and we get x minus 2 equals sine t. Take the other equation, y equals cos t minus 3, and add 3 to both sides, y plus 3 equals cos t. Then, what we do is we take sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and replace sine with x minus 2, and replace cos with y plus 3. So substitute them in, Square them, obviously, because it will be x minus 2 squared and y plus 3 all squared. And there we are. This is the equation of the curve. So generally, if you've got a pair of equations with sines and cos in them, it's going to roughly form this sort of shape of an equation here. And using sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 will get you there. Um, and this is going to form the equation of a circle, if you remember, from the first year of A-level maths. This is a circle with a centre of 2, 3, or sorry, 2 minus 3. This coordinate here is 2 minus 3. And the 1 on the end tells us that that's the radius squared, um, so that's going to have a radius of 1. So that's how you sketch these types of gra graphs. OK, another equation here then. We're going to do roughly the same thing with this one here. A curve has a parametric equation, x equals sine t, y equals sine 2t. And the question A is find a, find a Cartesian equation of the curve y equals uh, f of x, where the domain is in between minus k and up to k, stating the values of the constant k. We'll work that out towards the end. We'll just have a look at how we form this equation here first. So... As before, you can find expressions for sine and cos x and replace them into the identities above. So in this case here, it's going to be x equals sine t and y equals sine 2t. So the first thing I would do is probably play around with this y equals sine 2t and use the double angle formula on this. This is going to equal y is going to equal y equals 2 sine t cos t. So we can replace the sine t, that's just equal to x. So can we can just replace that straight in as x. But then we don't know what cos t is. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rearrange a sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 to get a value for cos t. So divide through by 2. Or you could do it this way. Yeah, this is a good way of doing it. So get a value for cos t and then substitute it into x sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And then rearrange the trig function, expand your brackets, and times through by 4x squared. So it's going to be 4x to the 4 plus y squared equals 4x squared. But we want it in terms of y equals f of x, so we'll have to subtract the 4x to the 4 from both sides and square root both sides. I'll do a bit of factorising first and then square root both sides. So we can square root this part here, but we're just going to have to leave this part here in a big square root. Right, so moving on to the next bit then. Now we need to check that the right-hand side would square to give the correct expression we had previously, um, and it does. So part B then, or no, we've got to now find the domain. We've still not finished part A, so it's from minus k up to k, and we're going to use this as our little bit of a clue as to how far the domain is going to go. 
And we're going to need to plug this into x equals sine t. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is because the domain is the range of x values, so we're going to have to plug it into the x equation. So substituting in the upper bounds and the lower bounds, and we get from minus 1 to 1, so therefore our domain here is going to be from minus 1 uh, is less than x is less than 1. So that's finished part A then, right uh, down the range of f of x. Um, so for this one here, we don't need to really use these two functions. Here we're going to use these two bits of information here. Remember that the range of f of x is the range of possible y-coordinates. So in this case here, have a look at the sine 2x graph. This is what the sine 2x graph looks like. And what are the values in between minus pi to pi? Uh, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Well, the minimum value is going to be minus 1, and the maximum value is going to be 1, so therefore the range is in between minus 1 to 1 inclusive, so therefore the range of this question here for the answer for part b is minus 1 to y to 1. So to work out the domain and range for parametric equations, you use the domain of the t values and then use either the x for the domain and the y for the range. So this is what the graph will roughly look like. As you can see here, it will stop at minus 1 up to 1 and it won't go as high as minus 1 and 1. Quite an quite interesting shaped graph there, I think. Right, moving on to a slightly more difficult one here now. x equals cot t plus 2 and y equals cos x squared t minus 2. I'm pretty sure, as soon as I saw this, there is an identity that links cot and cos x squared together. Um, so the question is, find an equation y equals f of x and state the domain for the curve and hence sketch the curve. So the first thing we would do is start by rearranging the parametric equations like this. x minus 2 equals cot t. And y equals cos x squared t minus 2 or plus 2 to both sides of that one. And we're going to get y plus 2 equals cos x squared t. But I, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's an identity that links cos x squared and cot squared. And there's something to do with 1 in there as well. Uh, the identity that we're going to be using here is 1 plus cot squared t equals cosec squared t. So we're going to need to square the cot squared function and substitute it into the equation. So it's going to be 1 plus x minus 2 all squared equals y plus 2. And now we just need to rearrange it into the form of y equals f of x. So in this case here, we're going to get y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. And hence, sketch the curve. Well, in this case here, we have... Um, so, find the domain. We've still got to find the domain for part A. So, using your uh, t-value limits on the cot graph here, um, the values there are going to... Um, Actually, it's going, to, it's going to reach an asymptote at these points here. So it's going to asymptote there, asymptote there. So in fact, the x values can be any uh, possible value they wish to be. Okay, so hence sketch the curves now. So find the roots in the y-intercept. So take your y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Factorize it and you're going to get x minus 1, x minus 3. Therefore, it's going to have roots at 1 and 3. Its y-coordinate intercept is at 3. And there we are. That's the answer to this question then. OK, so it's your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try these two out. Right then, let's have a go at question 1a then. Hopefully this was uh, an easy one for you. The first thing we're going to do is rearrange the first equation into x plus 1 sine t. And for the second one it's going to be y minus 4 over 5 equals um, cos t. And now we're just going to replace this into sine squared t plus cos squared t equals 1. And we're going to get a bit of a strange fraction here. We'll just times through it um, at the end. So x plus 1 squared plus 
y minus 4 over 5 all being squared equals 1. I'm just going to play around with this a little bit. You would have been fine having this as your answer. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split off the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. And then I think I will times everything by 25 so that it's up to the top row. So there we are. That's the answer to this question here then. Uh, question 6, a little bit more of a tricky one here. Find the Cartesian equation of C and sketch the curve C on the appropriate domain. So part A then. We've got um, cos T is equal to x over 8, just rearranging the first equation there. And for the second one here, this is going to be um, the key to it. We've got sec here and cos here. Uh, there's not necessarily a, an equation linking these two, but um, sec is 1 over cos. So in this case here, it's going to be four, 1 over 4 cos squared t. So all that's left for us to do now is substitute in x over 8 into the y equation. So y equals 1 over 4 x over 8 squared. And then bring this up to the top row. So it's going to be um, it's going to be 64 on the top, but we've got 4 on the bottom, so we'll cancel that out. So it's going to be 16 over x squared. We now need to work out what the domain is going to be. So what we need here is the cos graph in between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So in this case here, the domain is in between 0 and 1. So therefore, when we draw this graph, we only have x values in between 0 and 1. <clears throat> so in this case here, it's going to be 16 over x squared, so it's going to be this curve down from here to here and stop there, where x is a 1 coordinate. Okay, it would have continued down here and down here and down here, but our domain limits this. Okay, there we are, that's the answer to these two questions then, so have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 8b. Um, persevere through the difficult ones, ask your teacher for help, challenge yourself on the problem-solving extension questions, and thanks very much for watching.